Wa u a. We're gonna start out with pencils. Uh, pencils, they're cheap. They're reliable. Uh, they're everywhere. You can anybody can start out with pa uh, paper, pencil, an eraser. And you can have a sharp point or you can make it blunt with the sandpaper or and even the erasers you can get a knife and actually shape out the eraser to get fine lines uh, when you're erasing there's needed erasers and it's all so super cheap and available so this is four years ago this was last year this was last month And this is a binder I made for uh, art lessons for beginners. And we all started out as blobs, and hopefully we can get to beginner. And one of your biggest challenges is time, how you manage your time and how you spend your time. And based on your choices, you'll see how far you get. There's like different stages you can go. Boink. The start. And here's me as a blob, and I'm pushing a pencil sharpener, and my dog's sitting on the other side blocking me. So unless you have an easel or upright, um, platform to draw on you're gonna be drawing the rider's grip uh the underhand grip is really nice just because you can get really smooth strokes because you're using your whole arm here's me just drawing it just rider's grip versus the underhand grip and just based on how you have your tip angle you can leave different marks so that'll be useful for what effects you want to try to get uh, i was just kind of practicing warming up with tip angles so this is just important to be aware of when you're drawing whether you're using your finger your wrist your elbow uh, your shoulder uh, and helping that to help you make smooth lines or smooth curves uh, So here is just how, where you start how to start where to end and how to end in the path when you're making your strokes And this is just important gonna just be more mindful of it when you're drawing the the C the line the dot and the S curves The S is really just a combination of the C curve so with all these you can just combine them to make different shapes and and once you get used to the the dot lines and curves then you can try to make them at different pressure values and that will get you different values from nothing to lightest to the darkest which is the hardest you can go with pencil without breaking the page so just just to practice a little bit more i did it with on the grid, and then you want to make sure you can try to get it smooth so these are just exercises um, that you can do if you don't know what to do. Another great exercise is to draw in all directions. You'll find your your favorite um, favorite angles, and sometimes to get those nice smooth lines or smooth curves, you're gonna have to rotate the page just so you can use your best angles. Um, but this is just good practice so you can be able to draw in all the directions. And here's just another example of me practicing, kind of see what I can do with the pencil. And after a while, it's always good uh, to actually try to test yourself. I kind of just made it called an exam, uh, but I wanted to get better at drawing objects, places, and animals. So I just drew my water bottle. Uh, I used all the things that I've been practicing that I just told you about. After that, you want to try to practice perspective, study perspective. Uh, perspective is its own topic. Uh, I don't know if I, I won't be able to get it covered in this video, but just... My tip is when you're drawing from still life, make sure the object, if it's small, you can have it relatively close to you. Um, but if it's too big, you have to be a little bit farther away because you don't want it in your peripherals. Uh, and you don't want to be shifting your eyes too much uh, or your head too much to see different parts of it because then you're changing perspectives. So, so here is just practicing. I just see, uh, just pick some spot. Uh, I was pretty hesitant at first because I was like, oh, it has to be a nice looking spot. But then I was like, dude, I'm never going to draw because I'm, <laughs> I'm always too picky about it. So I was just like, let me just practice drawing whatever I see. Then you want to be able to learn how to do um, horizontal planes. Uh, well, that's a horizontal plane. This is a vertical plane. That's a vertical plane. Here's another good exercise is to draw boxes in all different directions. And then you want to try to draw a two-point perspective. Then you get that kind of that fish eye effect. Um, so or just find something and draw it. And use your use all the perspective tips that you have. So start from drawing a box and then adding more details and structure to it.
And the key is just to keep practicing. And keep practicing. Then you can start like applying and try to do some studies. Here I was just kind of doing some practicing. And it's pretty fun to just duplicate them. Just be able to make shapes and duplicate them and make sure they're the relative size when you move them through space. So once we get pretty solid with drawing squares and boxes in space, we're gonna try to get other shapes and other forms in 3D. So let's practice drawing circles in a square and that'll, that'll be a, a big help when we try to draw circles in, in perspective. Because if we can draw a square in perspective, we can draw a circle in perspective. Uh, here we go. You can draw a square in perspective, you can draw a circle or an ellipse or a sphere or a cone or a cylinder in perspective. So after you do all this basic color uh, practice, then you can actually try to apply it to try something more interesting or everyday objects. Like here, you can make a pill bottle or a thermos. You can have cylinders, make more spheres, make cups with spheres, apples, oranges, beach balls, make even more beach balls and more balls. And once you can get all the shapes done, then you can start playing them and manipulating them and putting them together to make complex forms. You see how we've been practicing cones, cylinders, uh, boxes, spheres. Uh, and then once you can, you can kind of snip off pieces and put them together like building blocks in perspective. It's really cool. Just whatever you see, keep it within uh, your little window. You see some people do, um, they stretch our arms out and they make their picture frames. So that can help you kind of focus your, your eye, and your vision. And here, I just kind of picked some more things to practice. Found some tables, some shelf. Uh, wanna, I really want to be able to draw my dog. So Here, I'm putting more objects together. Just putting everything we practice together. And if you ever do get bored of it, I understand. You can get colored pencils. Colored pencils are pencils. And just play with the color wheel. Be able to use colored pencils or markers, whatever, and be able to do gradients. And try to practice them within your... Um, forms um here i was trying to make skin colors and just practice kind of be able to you've been practicing your pencil line art get some references and then you can try to draw and you see here this one i was like hasn't i was like oh i don't want to ruin this i don't want to ruin it so i was like well let me just make it a few times and i ended up got really uh, pretty consistent with drawing that same thing over here just drew it, didn't want to mess it up, but I ended up, I think, copying it and then on a printer and then drawing on that. Uh, you can also do that, take a picture of that, upload it and paint it digitally and experiment on there if you don't want to ruin one of your pencil sketches. And here we go, and then we start talking about value. I like it, have it on a five point scale, kind of makes it easier. You just have to kind of come up with your head what zero is no no pressure no marks and one is the lightest i can make it and then five is the hardest i can make it without putting a hole in the page or breaking the tip the pencil or the color pencil and two three four i kind of have to find it and try to make them equally spaced out so i do some practices going from hard to light to hard back through and then once we get good at that then we can start shading and here we're building on all the things we've been studying and practicing. And it's pretty cool. It's all coming together. And we go study light and how shadows and how we can replicate the, those values on paper. So here's my practicing. Here I'll just kind of go over my notes of how to draw lights and shadows. Just more examples. And then you can apply it to complex forms, which is really cool. And this is where we can get applying to our for most people's interests and that's drawing people and like i said I, uh, at this time i was studying uh, andrew loomis's book on drawing i forget the title of it and then you can start studying the human body first you need to get the proportions and break them into simple shapes simple simple shapes the shapes that we've been practicing and then after that 
then you can get more complex and actually add the muscles and but just start simple um it just slowly builds up we just slowly build up and then we can add complex forms as we study and it just starts off with what's simple and we progress to more complicated but it's all the same the process is all the same just always break it down to your most simple and then add the complex here you just want to go maybe subject by subject because studying the whole head sometimes it gets too difficult so you want to just break it down into different topics so this one i got from the book and it was a challenge for myself i was like dude this is so complicated but the task was to draw a 10 by 20 by 30 room at six foot eye level with two figures with six foot eye level standing six or 25 feet apart in a single point perspective. So this, this was pretty fun. This was another fun one. It was the same thing, but in two point perspective. So draw a 10 by 20 by 30 room at six foot eye level with two figures with six foot eye levels standing 25 feet apart in two point perspective more and then a student asked me if she uh, if i could draw martin luther king for her so she <laughs> i did she said she uh, printed it out and put it on her wall that uh, was pretty cool so so glad i'm keeping it up and here's just more drawing kind of breaking down the shapes finding more things in the real life just finding simple objects just breaking them down to simple shapes using my marks I don't really think about my which body part is moving to make make the the marks, the pressure gradients. Let's see here. So here I was just getting bored of like doing that, so I was like, maybe I'll use this to design something. So I made this like little um, toilet toilet roll, not a toilet roll. Uh, paper towel roll, paper airplane, and put some toy dinosaurs next to it. I wanted to, uh, I was getting really bored of it, so I went to just practicing my, doing my marks by actually practicing, um, finding references of Disney characters. Uh, I like drawing D Disney or anime and comic stuff, so. So I decided I'd, uh, then there's my little dog. So yeah, I was like, let me do this instead of um, doing those random doodles for my mark, practicing my marks, strokes. I just copy professional art. And I have some advice also, if you kind of get the line art right, like the, um, the edges of your line, try to clean it up and then try to be more confident. You see how scratchy some of these lines are? I recommend trying to go um, a little harder, make them confident lines they'll stay and then erase all the mistakes it'll clean up your artwork make it look better and then try to add extra like shading to it here i was too hesitant to really commit to the shading i did a little bit and i was like oh it kind of looks like a beard i don't really like it so you just have to experiment more so you can get more practice in and more um really challenge yourself so you can really grow that's what I felt like was limiting myself for the past few years. Yeah, same thing. I just kind of, kind of plateaued my art. Just like, looked the same. I could decently copy art. Here's an example of me kind of committing more towards um, being more bolder and confident with my dark lines. And I think I think it worked. Uh, I, I like these a lot more. And here's another. I was like, too, I had enough doing color, but I was just said, screw it. Let me just try some color. And I, it looked, it looks a lot better than just the pencil sketches that I did. So here's some more. I just found something and just drew it. I, I, was, I was being too picky. Yeah, just really focus on getting your scale and proportions right before you start adding all the details and the shading in. Here's an example of me not getting my portions and scale right like look at it where's his neck where's his shoulders so make sure you get all that before you uh put all the details in that you, know, you can get your... and you're gonna practice a lot but hopefully you can see like how mine's just the same thing it's just like a box i just draw boxes hopefully you're challenging yourself more i think that's why i plateaued for so long